welcome into the Nickel City crew. I am your host, Bob Griffin. Please look on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Nickel City Crew. This episode, along with all our episodes, are presented by Crippin Lexi Entertainment here on Spreaker. We're so glad that you're joining us for some of your welcome vocals and NFL content again today. And as always, these are my Bill's thoughts set out loud. All right, let's get straight to it. I'm really excited for tonight's episode. Uh, Nick, we're back in the building. Wow, well, I guess I can officially say that that escalated rather quickly. This could, this could be something special. I mean, so fellas, listen, I'm welcome, and I'm really happy to be joined tonight by uh, um, you know, my co-host once again, Adam Jump. Ross, holla at the crew, DT. What's, what's good? Up? What's, what's up? What's, what's up? Good? We're back. I mean, that, that, has, know, that escalated good. pretty quickly. I mean, whoa. Feel good Monday. <laughs> Feel good Monday. It was nice uh, Sit over those last five days, I had a nice little trip out of town. Went to Minneapolis for the uh, uh, Falcon Packers Vikings. Had a good time, and it was a uh, smiling from from Thursday at midnight till till I just got back in Buffalo about a half hour ago. So it, it was nice not to have to worry about that and just kind of watch the rest of the NFL slate play out. But man, exciting, exciting first week. All expectations <coughs> met. We we ready to get into it tonight. We're ready yeah, to get man, into it. Yeah, man, we got to get into it because it has it felt it, it feels like an eternity since the game has happened, and I think that that's part of the fact that, like you just said, enjoying all of the NFL action yesterday, uh, stress free, not having to worry about the fact that the Bills are getting ready to play and what time we're we playing, mitigating or or setting up a uh, different type of part of the arrangements. We literally could be leisure uh, yesterday, and it was so much fun. Uh, watching all of the NFL action. What a wild week one we had in the NFL. Well, I, I've i got to take my medicine. I teach my, my, my three kings that it, it is important to, to be accountable. So joining us tonight again, I had to bring up back. I we have great reviews from last week's episode. But in addition to it, it was just so much good, positive vibes. And like we were literally uh, feeding off of each other. So I, I was really happy to have uh, my guest again, Big Mike. From that podcast in the seven one six over at Hilton Buffalo, you heard Shot. the name. Oh, that's cool, I mean, man. Oh, hey, man, I'm, 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 I'm man up, man. I mean, I'll, I'll take, I'll, I'll take my, I'll take my medicine. Holler what is that? <laughs> what is that? You and DT, man, y'all both predicted Bills wins, man. I was on, I was on an island by myself, man. Yo, DT, yo. Josh Allen is a monster. 17 is Yo, a monster. 17's Yo, nice, man. Right, man. right, right Yo, where I'm, we left off. I'm right cool. where we left off. That felt all good to see everything that man's capable of and and the way they put the ball in his hands when and the way he just kind of willed some drives into existence was, you know, something that has been he's been doing for a few years, something that he's gonna continue to do. And I mean, this is solidified now. Like this ain't no gimmick anymore. This this boy's here. This boy's for real. And man, that's that's fun to watch. And we'll get into it a little more tonight. I don't know if I want him taking as many hits as he did, but yeah, uh, we'll if it's if it's dubs that. and losses, I mean, he's doing everything to get those dubs. And man, what a what a G. What he's a, a dog, straight up man. He's a dog, dog man. man. Big Mike, he's a yo, gamer big, on big all Mike. levels. I was Woo! listening to the after show. And um, I retweeted it. Uh, I, excuse me. I tweeted it at Nate Geary because he was doing the after show. And he said, mm. he said, Josh Allen is a big Labrador retriever. Like, and like. For and real, he's like, a yo, big yo, he's man. Like, yo, he's big, a big, playful. But, like, but exactly. Exactly. In that same vein. What he meant was wow. that not only is he big in stature, but he's also, he's also playful. Like, a, a, I, and like, yo, I, I tweeted it. He retweeted me, yada, yada, yada. That was, that was kind of cool. But the whole point was that he, I was like, perfect analogy, bro. Like that, like he, yeah. yo, Big Mike, we have a literal dog playing quarterback who does things yeah. that no other quarterback in the league does. Now, please speak Absolutely. on it, man, because listen, Lamar Jackson is a jackrabbit. He will run from you. He will dodge you. He will make you look stupid. Um, I don't know any other quarterback that is mobile that's like Josh Allen. He is literally, no. Colin Cowherd said it the other day on Friday, he is Giannis, he is one of one. That was that was so perfect of a description. Yeah. He's one of one, Big Mike. He's a he's just a he's a phenom, man. Like you, you haven't seen a quarterback like this with the stature, the um, 
the drive, the abilities. His arm is the strongest in the game. Like in his his level of like smartness on the field and and making better decisions. He, he's he's escalated every single year. I don't think we've ever seen that. Like every single year, you get better and better, and not like a little bit, like yeah. crazy better. And mm-hmm. you know it. Just to see him play, man, and just have a smile on his face when they try to bring him aggression, he welcomes that. Yeah, we don't put, see quarterbacks who welcome crazy. aggression. You don't see that ever. So to have that, and everybody was on spotlight that game mm-hmm. Thursday night. There was nothing else for you to do but watch the Bills put a <laughs> foot in the Rams' hey, ass. Man. So Yo. <laughs> everybody saw that. DT, yeah, it's, it's, listen, it's changed. It's it, changed from experimental mm-hmm. to expectation. Mm-hmm. You know, Josh Allen knows knows he's athletic, knows he's got the arm, knows you know he can he can do a lot of stuff. But he's playing in the NFL with the big boys, you know. So he the vet first couple of years and he wasn't scared to experiment, but it was experimental. He was let me see if I can do this. Let me see if right. I can do this. Right. Is, is this just going to be some schoolyard you know some schoolyard shit that's not going to work? Right. Oh right. no, it right. works. And now so mm-hmm. it turns into that confidence is exponentially growing into it's not experimental anymore. It's expectation. Like I'm going to haul off and do some wild shit and it's going to, it's going to be awesome. And he actually, he actually kind of alluded to it. I know we've all listened to that wonderful uh, YouTube uh, with him and, and, uh, and Chris Sims um, and kind of breaking it down. He kind of alluded to it. Chris asked him straight up, like, when did you like, know that like you can't get away with everything. Like it was pop Warner anymore. And he said, he went specifically back to that new England game a few years back yeah. where he threw three picks. And like, he said like, okay, I don't need to make every single play. I need to let the other 10 help me out. So like, I think that the maturation of this young man, like he has literally taken it to another level where not only like you said, DT that I expect it, but like he gave us, he gave us two more highlights and two more pictures for our man caves and our woman caves. Like he gave yeah. us two more. The stiff arm hurdle. There's gonna, have a, the there's gonna be a book. I mean, there's had, gonna be a book had, with he, chapters. Yo, man, he had yeah, homeboy on the stiff arm just looking just like Josh Norman. Rest in peace to Josh Norman with, with, with Derrick Henry. And he had him horizontal. He, he had, had my man horizontal. Like this. And he got Flat. right in that neck meat. I, I joke with my with my, with my sons and I say, I'm going to tickle him. I tickle him right in that neck meat. He put yeah. his hand right in that neck meat between his shoulder pads and his helmet. And he pushed him. He chopped my man's head off. <laughs> he chopped my man's head clean off. I was like, yo, this dude is insane. Like the way he, the way he cocked it back. Like, <laughs> it's he, like a he, shot put. <laughs> he was running at him and he cocked that shit back. And he was just like. Wow! I was like, "What? <laughs> that opportunity! This dude and you is know, insane!" And you know, fun- when he was when he was rolling on the ground after that tackle, too, he, he just had to have. He was to be smiling. Smirking. He like, was laughing. Let's go. He was laughing the Uh-oh. whole time. He's he's crazy. That's so funny that y'all keep talking about the laughing because I put that on Twitter after the game because they kept talking about how he was laughing and I wa- I was watching the game and seeing him getting up and they tried to chicken wing his leg and take him apart yep. like a like a flat on the laughing. one sideline and he was laughing and I was like, man. That's scary because if the quarterback is accepting and and what? and and wants that kind of punishment in respect to the fact he's that he's beckoning he's, it, he's like <laughs> he's bring it. it, yeah, he's bringing it on. That is really scary for the other opponents, and that's what I put on Twitter was that listen, the other opponents on the schedule need to be ready um, because seventeen uh, is literally not playing any games, and he 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 set the tone literally from uh, the beginning of the game. Now, could we you will imagine be- a Titan sitting at home? <laughs> Watching no, not, that game, yeah, like, not after what they did yesterday for sure. I would <laughs> <laughs> like what? Yeah. Oh shit! Oh what no, that was Von Miller. Is? Von Miller was on the sideline. I love that from the Bills. They put up the production of it, and they had a little quick video. And Von Miller watched him on the on the highlight. And he said, "Yo, he went to Trey Edwards. He went to Sad, <laughs> our boy Savage." He said, "He said WTF." He said, "What? It's like what?" And he was like, Savage was like, man. And he just made the face like, this is what this dude do. Like, he's, he's a monster. He does. He's That's a he monster. Does. He just passed pass right down to the rest of the team. And when your best player, when your star, when your quarterback is out there making plays like that and, and putting his oh. body on the line like that, What's that it's make electric. you do? You know, you you better get it's you better electric. start following suit. You know, you better start following that leadership because you better because man, he, yeah. it, he and that's so that's so true, DT. Because we talk and then I, I will poo poo about culture and I'll poo poo about different things that I I don't feel um, sometimes get you know you know riled up like you know Rex Ryan had a great culture until it wasn't a great culture 
and and like until i feel like <laughs> right exactly yeah. until they stuck so yeah. everybody's important and everybody is it, it's important for everybody to understand that when you're winning everything kind of comes into place and it kind of makes it a situation where um you know the culture can kind of be validated so to speak mcdermott has come into this bills team he's gotten guys to buy in von miller chose us he's here he's spreading his wealth and as we switch to the defensive line yo the D he's leading this team well, like the 300 yo exactly. like yo like i'm on that same energy big mike yeah. because like yo did you see it dt i know we all saw it bills mafia nickel city crew the defensive line was coming at him in waves and i said wait a minute waves. do we literally have two waves. separate lineups of four so we have eight grown men who can create pressure on a four-man front allows you to drop them it allows you to play different colors on the back stick in your zone to do different things to help hide your young corners which again we'll get to in a minute because they played so well and i'm so proud of, 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 of elam and benford but but before yeah. we get there we have to start with the with football and football is is played at the line of scrimmage offensive line defensive line dt the defensive line we literally were rolling out eight now that's not yeah. an exaggeration between von miller and group and then on the inside with daquan uh, jones along with ed oliver and then even before ed got hurt we're bringing in a whole number four of AJ Epinesa and Boogie. And then on the inside, we've got Settle to come in and, and, and rotate as well. Like we almost had damn near eight. Shaq didn't even get a jersey. I was surprised. Yeah. I was most surprised that Kair didn't get a jersey, but Shaq didn't even get a jersey. DT, the D line. Well, if we don't come with yeah, four, big, what's up? Man, what y'all doing? How y'all fucking with us? And we've been what's up. And we were talking about this leading up, you know, where the the deep line, but we were talking about it more in the aspect of the this defense you know these these d backs are going to need some help being so young and the spotlight and everything on them you know they're going to need some help so we were talking about the d line and the fact of you know more of a of a like you said to to cover up that those defensive backs but they turned to the stars of the show you know and came out you know hot i'd love to see von miller obviously getting those early sacks that early pressure that's only bringing the the vibe strong back jordan phillips two big sacks and i mean i've he was getting up hype like that how juice can you get when you get you know mm -hmm. rolling on that and when he gets up hype like that my man daquan jones uh mm -hmm. known him for a long time and that i'd like to see him getting the most snaps on defense um out of anybody he had a whole crazy you know conditioning off off season as well kind of slimmed <clears> down in that regard to you know be able to play for the long haul plugging up taking two blockers mm -hmm. Um, Ed, Ed Oliver was the, one of the quietest ones, hopefully, you know, no major injury or anything to him, yeah. but, mm -hmm. um, but he was one of the, you know, lesser out of that group of, like you said, you said it best, Rob waves. They came at him in waves. The pressure was in Stafford's face all game long. Mm -hmm. He was never comfortable. Oh, man. He was uh, tore Big up. Mike. I felt like I was coaching my youth basketball team where I'm bringing in a whole little literal separate five. Like we got five yep. and yeah. then we got a whole nother five. Yeah, we got a whole nother five. Listen, y'all get y'all water. Five. And then y'all be back in uh, in a, in a few minutes. Like literally, it was like a hockey shift, man. Like like big Mike. And, then, a and last week, pressure. They created last pressure. Week, I said that. Uh, I said, remember, I said that uh, Basham was going to have a standout game. He sure did. Yeah, you called. I it. said that. Yeah. I yeah, called. That it. Was, I knew it. Yeah. Everybody got, got a game. Everybody, everybody got a game. Everybody was turn. eating. That's that's the point, DT. Like everybody was eating. Like I'm with that. And Vanessa they, got a sack. I was about to say that. That's what I'm saying. Like everybody was like. Everybody had a fork. Yeah, everybody everybody you don't, a fork. And everybody you don't sub out table. offensive linemen. You know, mm -hmm. no, you don't do sub not. out offensive linemen. So you these five not. dudes were having to block a different guy every play, a, a hungry, a fast Fresh. guy every Fresh. play. Fresh. And man, that had to be a tough night I, as an old off. You know, as I played some time on the line myself, and you know, just the, when that when the other team had that stud, you, it was always a long day. You never wanted to square up against them, and. That was all night at every position, you know, for this Rams yeah. offensive line. So that, is, yeah. that, that was really setting the tone for the entire, you know, obviously the entire defense, the entire game. I think the D-line pressure was was massive. Yeah, I, I really think that it, it makes a big deal. And, and as I move forward, I know that you and that the three of us actually had some conversations right after the game. and We had a fun conversation to kind of get some of our thoughts, immediate reaction um, all after Thursday's game. And it was really interesting because looking at the way that the, the actual defense played, um, it leads it to to the future and it leads an eye to the future of 
if you can come with four and drop seven, legitimately, though, you are a problem, though, defensively. Now, that is a problem. That is not something that every team is able to do. You do have to manufacture pressures. Defensive coordinators come up with different types of schemes, and they'll stay up late at night trying to figure out a way to confuse Tom Brady and, and all the different quarterbacks around the league the same way that they try to confuse our quarterback. They didn't blitz once. And I think that that is a glaring stat that if I didn't mention it, it would be off-brand. We have to mention the fact that they did not blitz once the bills are now the third excuse me it's the third occurrence of a team not uh, blitzing since i think it was like the stat came up like in 2006 or something crazy like that Mm -hmm. we've got all of them sean mcdermott has all of the instances with leslie frazier where they do not blitz they 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 believe in their principle and the principle is that listen we're going to try to generate pressure and even if we can't get quite home we're going to we have enough on the back end that listen, our guys are, are elite and our safeties are elite and they're all pros. That's and, confident. And that's confident yes, in the other yes, guys. That's the whole okay. point. They have the confidence in this the team. Guy. Regardless yeah. if it's yep. Tredavious White's jersey out there or if it's Christian yep. Benford or Kyrie. Play, you know, play your like, role. Play your role. That's all you got to do job. is play your role. And, yeah. and, and you see how the Bills do. They operate as a unit. Everybody mm-hmm. plays their role. And that's how you have, you know what I mean? That's how you have success. All these guys are playing their roles. And they're doing it at such a high level, man, with such precision. Because, like you said, I, iron sharp is iron. So it's like these guys are the best of the best going out here every fucking day, like going crazy. So when they were put to the test and got on there with the uh, Super Bowl champions, yeah, we put that cigarette out quick. <laughs> yeah, man. That, quick. The, game, the game was really fun. And to be honest, there was a lot of meat left on the bones to be honest out you know again we'll be we'll keep it we'll keep it funky as we always do here at nickel city crew so we won't drink wow. all of the kool-aid we're, we're drinking a bunch of it and and i feel good about the kool-aid that we're drinking however we won't we won't drink everything four turnovers nah, next game yes and four turnovers could be a problem dt down the road and that's something when i watched kansas city one of the luxuries that we had yesterday again of watching all of the nfl games transpire with no stress <laughs> and watching all the teams play kansas city looks just on par um, just like we thought and we assumed that they would not uh, lose too much of a step with Tyreek Hill gone. I mean, you four turnovers, could it could have been different is what I'm trying to say. I want to keep everybody understanding. That 10-10 game, every single Bills fan that watched that 10-10 game knew that we were the better team on that field. They were yep. lucky to be in that game. In a different game, you may not get that lucky in respects to the turnovers and then the other team not capitalizing. Speak well, on you got to notice, you gotta notice that, uh, sorry, DT, you got to notice that the team is where it's at, and they like the starters are working out their kinks. And you talking about y'all was working out y'all kinks and still beat them thirty-one to ten. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm not impressed, but DT the turnovers, yeah. the turnovers are not. That's not ideal. Obviously, one wasn't on have, Josh. You can't have with, that many. No, but, but they were not. all on someone. McKen- it was McKenzie's fault yeah. for the first interception. It was a combination of Josh and Crowder. Not either. It, it, I guess I heard reports that Josh read the coverage and identified the coverage as man properly, but but Crowder thought that it could have been zoned, so that's why he kept moving, and that's why the ball was behind on the second pick. And then the fumbles are on those backs. Hold the damn ball, period, James Cook, period, Zach Moss. So, I DT, speak on it, man. I'm not crazy. I know turnovers have been less Of course, not at all. And and four four is a lot. Four is a lot. You know, and in any game, you know, McDermott's not going to be happy with one. And, you know, we if the victory obviously cures a lot of that. But four turnovers is a lot. You can't be getting into, you know, momentum because sooner or later, um, you know, you're going to get a team, even if it's not a good team down the road, that's going to, mm-hmm. you know, that's going to make you pay for those. It's the NFL at the end of the day. And turning the ball over is the quickest way you can you can lose a game. But this just goes back to credit on this defense of even in those turnovers, the ability to on a short field, you know, still be able to get out there and and force them to punt one time, force them to a, sh- a, a field goal another, and you know the touchdown was the touchdown, great throw, great catch in the in that regard, you know, from Stafford to Cup. But uh, the the defense really, you know, had the offenses back in the regard of all right, you, you four turnovers and didn't let anything bleed too much you know, on the defensive end. So that's that's something you can't take for granted. Um, you know, as a Bills offense, that's not going to happen every time to, you know, you can't just go out there, turn the ball over and expect the D to, to make right. a stop. So defense bailed them out a lot. Um, four is way too many. And I've, obviously that's the a big the biggest takeaway. I think McDermott, the team itself, has taken. Um, you know, Josh, Josh will put those two picks on him, even though they, they probably weren't. He's going to put a, those on him and, you know, take it personally, um, you know, and, and, and not be throwing – 
thrown reckless um, as much like that. But um, when it comes to fumbling it from the running backs, you know, that just I, that's inexcusable. It's not, inexcusable not on all starter, levels. Like, in the NFL, starter. I mean, you can't, especially <laughs> James Cook, like, welcome to the NFL, man. I, I hate seeing that, obviously. On I didn't like that. I, Big Mike, I didn't like that he went back to the bench and said three times, I could see him on my TV, on NBC, yeah. talking about, I was, I was down, down, man. I was down. down, man. I was like, I mean, you uh, needed not down. Please from, stop and please think about holding on to the ball. Other than the from the draft, the from the draft, he's been needing uh, a welcome to the NFL stamp. So um, I think this will do him well. Uh, he, you know, when you feel like privileged, like you're gonna end up here anyway. My brother's here. You know, I'm good. Stuff like that. But when you get in a real game, it's real. You know, things really happen. This was a big time game. He dropped the ball. So if he doesn't learn from this man, he's probably not gonna see a lot of time. So yeah, it's probably the first time in his life. And this is, you know, and this goes on for a lot of players, I'm sure. But Mm -hmm. this is the first time in James Cook's life where this mistake, you know, is probably brushed off in Georgia. He's the he's the top back. He he, he fumbles. All right. Go go back and get him the next series. And in high school, he's probably by far the best player on the field. He fumbles. Okay, you're getting back out there in this case. You fumble, you might not play for three or four weeks. You know, yeah, so yeah. this is this is a you situation where that. you know it's it's not just you can brush it off because you're the best player on the field anymore. Like you got to earn a spot on this team, and that's what McDermott and Bean are you know are huge on of, mm-hmm. of earning your time out there. And we've seen it in the past of players making mistakes, and you don't see them for a while. I don't know how they're gonna you know handle this situation with Cook being you know being a rookie, and you know because there's a battle of you know confidence and are we are we being too hard on him do we got to get him out there and get some but he's in a good situation a good culture a good locker room to be able to shake that off and you know guys like josh allen i'm sure are coming up to him like hey we you know we draft you for a reason you're going to be crucial in this in this offense let's get let's get this in the back burner and you know i hope it's a situation where he's back next week and a pivotal role and shows us some bright spots of what he can do as opposed to you know maybe a veteran where they might not see the field for a few weeks as as kind of a punishment yeah, no, I understand. And and it's, it's been interesting to see how McDermott handles those situations because, you know, we saw how he did, <laughs> how he did Zeke, you know, after he fumbled in Indianapolis and he was benched and then they needed him against New England and then he shows up and then as soon as he shows up, he was back on the bench. So it's interesting, you know, I, I think that it's safe to say that McDermott, you know, ball security is, is of the utmost importance to our head coach. So it is what it is on that. Uh, a big Mike. I mean, it could have been 45 10, Mike. Like, it could have been like 50 10. Oh, like, Mike, like, it could have been, it could it have been, been like way, way crazier, man. It could, it could have been, been out way of hand more for sure. insane. But then, you know, I, I guess, you know, you got to work some stuff out. And what a better way to work stuff out and show that you're still top dog, still while working through some kinks. Yeah. I guess the Super Bowl champions on the first game out. So everybody was at home watching. Right. Just their stomachs were in shambles. <laughs> because you, you got to know that you're playing these guys next or in a couple games. I would hate to look and be watching and watching that game be in Kansas City. Right. Yeah. In Kansas City well, watching that game, they were they weren't too happy at all. I mean, well, they played a good game yeah, yesterday as well. We're they, getting ready to take they the dominated. Triple the league. Yeah, yeah. Well, they well, played, you can argue they, played they the dominated Card- even more in, in a but situation. But they played the where- Cardinals. <laughs> they played the Cardinals. That's like playing Dallas. Like. <laughs> Same thing. We get ready to go around the league. Before we go around the league, man, we have to address just to have some fun and, and continue to show respect and give honor where it's due. You all know my favorite, uh, Bill, and you saw it on my Instagram. My, I mean, salute to the captain, Captain Diggs. The the pass from Josh Allen, running full speed, and then hops on his left foot and then jumps and throws it at least 50, 55 yards over Jalen Ramsey. I mean, if that wasn't mm-hmm. so sweet, if you didn't, el- if that didn't elicit a response that was audible in your house, I mean, I don't know really what else you're supposed to do. Maybe you had a newborn that was sleeping, Nickel City Crew or Bill's Mafia, but I, I screamed, my son screamed, and and then my baby son screamed just because we were screaming like that. It was crazy, yo, man. Stefan Diggs, salute to the captain, man. All game long, he was cooking this. He was cooking Jalen like I mean, literally barbecue chicken, man. He was. It was crazy, it was great. DT. Like it was the great. throws and, that and seventeen were making. It was, it was, it was great throws in combined with great hands and just excellent technician route running. And, I mean, of course, he's a and the setup for all that, uh, the setup for all that first first play of the game, it's a quick mm-hmm. slant to Stefan Diggs. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, we're gonna we're gonna speed you. This is this is your game. We need your energy to take over. We want to, you know, I wouldn't. 
say expose Jalen Ramsey because he didn't, you know, have a ton of help and, you know, whatever. But the the fact of the matter, the Bills made it a point. We're going to 14 early, often, and, you know, and and very as we get into kind of, you know, Ken Dorsey, our, our back and forth on, you know, how he was going to do, how he was going to get us started, kind of the, the – the tempo and the the method this offense was taking, but it was surrounded around feeding 14 whenever. And that's kind of what we've the past couple of years as Bills fans, what we've talked about is, you know, sometimes the game when we stall a little on the offensive end, it's like you kind of want them just to, to feed it to their best receiver. And and we saw that a little more. Josh gains more confidence and Stefan Diggs is the most confidence of, you know, of anybody that he's, he's out there. He's, he knows he wants to catch the ball and, and just the man in the ball and Josh kind of forcing it to him in some situations. And that throw, that touchdown was mm. awesome. Mm. Was big, awesome. Big, big Mike, so, man. Big so, Mike. No. That was, I mean, barbecue chicken. <laughs> was like <laughs> that was like That was What was that? What was that? Did Jalen not read the scouting report? Did he not think uh-huh. that, that Josh had the arm for that? He's 99 in Madden. Well, Ramsey. <laughs> arm straight. Like, what's up, man? <laughs> Ramsey been getting cooked for a while, though. You know what I'm mm. saying? Top receivers, they've been cooking him. So it's like, he not the top cornerback like everybody say he is. Nobody, and I don't think anybody's really saying it no more. Because you know, you well, notice. Well, I think, and I also think teams don't don't throw to him. It's kind of like the Trey White method, right? Trey White is out there a couple of games. You never hear his name because teams don't throw to his side of the field. And I think that's right. the same for Jalen Ramsey because he right. will make he gets a lot of respect. You know, on a, a on, a, on a, maybe a less talented quarterback, he, he definitely will make you pay, but. But Bills weren't Josh scared. was they not scared of him. I know 17 and, wasn't scared of him. And, I know that. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think they the Rams were expecting that. I think they took it for granted. Like, hey, they're not going to throw to Jalen Ramsey. We we can kind of you know, not forget about that side of the field, but, you know, not put as much effort into that game plan. And and Josh went at him the whole game, you know, and Diggs took it took it great. Even the, the sideline one where he had him fall down and get in his face, like – Diggs, Diggs was loving that too, you know, having being able to hit, put the little boy on top of his helmet after the tut. He went out to shake his hand, like he, he, he we love that. We love to see that. But um, that's we're not scared of anybody. That's that's the moral of that. You know, teams are going to shy away from Jalen Ramsey, shy away from a lot of stuff, and it just showed the seventeen and fourteen aren't scared of anybody, and nope. they're not going to see a corner like that for a while. So not I'm for excited. A while, like who else? Mm-hmm. No. Right that for for a minute like so that's what i'm saying like that thursday game was the man the just the they set the tone so crazy for the season so crazy bill set the tone so high with this game you know i mean 31 to 10 i guess the super bowl champions everybody has so much hype stafford's in the new team he's doing so well blah 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 hey man all that shit got a click and our quarterback is a boss is a phenom he is, he, man. He, I mean, he's he's Monster. Don Corleone. He and is he. I mean, he's the man. I mean, he is the monster. godfather. <laughs> he is. Really he is, he well, is a know, monster. You know, I got somebody. I, I, I'm I'm uh, I'm calling T right now because we are both upset at your predictions. Let's not forget that. <laughs> listen, I, not- listen. Before we take a trip around the league, I will take my medicine. <laughs> okay, <laughs> y'all both had victories for the Bills. Listen, in my in my final defense before I get roasted like Jalen Ramsey, yeah. DT, Big Mike, what I will say is that yeah. the reason I thought that they could they would I lose, I did put it down as a loss. The reason why was a combination. It was a combination look, 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 look. of it was a combination of the chance. Hey, I'm trying to make <laughs> it was a no, listen, T. It was a combination of the champs. Being at home favorites, excuse me, home underdogs. It was a it was a combination of the fact that they were unveiling their banner. Um, I felt that they would feel a dis, little bit disrespected, and I felt that every Bills fan that I had talked to thought that we were going fifteen and two. I was trying to bring a little bit of of levity to the situation. Wrong. I was just I was just Wrong. trying to make sure that everybody knew I'll, we're I'll going stand, seventeen. I'll stand, and, oh, your, oh my I'll stand God. up in your defense. I'll stand up in your defense right now. Bro. No, you but you had him as a win. I, I did I have him as a loss. You you I had him as a win. As well. and, down, and what what haven't we seen? What haven't we seen the Bills do multiple years now? A pass Let's, rush. T, a dominant T pass is here. Rush. T is here. Join us, T. T, you are you are joining us. This is live and happening right now. Nickel City Crew. This is the first time we've had a call and guest uh, mid show. T, I am sorry. I was not trying to disrespect my quarterback or this yeah, wonderful defensive line. I just thought that that it was it was just too much to ask. What's up? Rob. I'm I'm wrong. Rob, stop. 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 Stop
Stop it. <laughs> I told Mike I had concerns, but my concern wasn't even Josh Allen. It wasn't so much. It was our, our corners. Mm-hmm. And I thought our safeties could handle it. My my concerns was never our defense. Our offensive line, we had, you know, got those new people in there or whatever, but my concerns was just the back end of our defense. Of I course. Was, Everybody should have been worried. I was worried that Cooper Cup was getting ready to, 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 to carve us up, and he did, but it didn't matter because the defense was so good overall. But yeah. I, I'm, I, why am I so crazy? Because I was worried that, that Ken Dorsey we had never called plays before. We weren't before. expecting a pass rush like that to make up for that Cause you, hole in cause the Rob back crazy. Of defense. Rob, <laughs> Rob, you crazy. Rob, you crazy. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe Rob this, crazy, man. Hey, I listen, can't believe this. Because you didn't see what we saw. You know what I'm saying? We Bills fans, okay? Oh, my gosh. I'm not a Bills fan because I think we could possibly lose the game. Listen, hey, I'm not going to take much more blasphemy. Until week five. I'm not gonna take much more blast. He's a man. he's a Houston Texans fan until week five. <laughs> no, oh, like, uh, listen, that I was trying to give him some credit with the Texans. They got off. At least they got a tie. <laughs> T, thank you for joining us. In and, and, and Mike, I understand that I got to eat my medicine and have it. So, I mean, it's it's understandable. Yeah. I mean, listen, I mean, it's it's all good. Rob, you're terrible. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> oh, oh my god they roasted me on my own show listen man i i had a, a great time watching the nfl yesterday i i did get it wrong with the bills and obviously they should have won uh, i should have known that they were going to win i should say but listen oh, it is what it is i should have known i should have known bills we were podcast, bro. We're, i know but you can't be i can't be a homer dt i mean come on yeah. i'm just supposed to pick the bills every week yeah, I get it. See, because yeah, oh man, no, I mean it's it is what it is. I had to I had to go in and with that confidence, and you know, I definitely thought Josh Allen could could overcome it, and he did. But like we said, that, that pass rush hasn't been there. Now it is. So if you know, if we knew the defensive line was going to play like like they did, even if even if the Rams scored a bunch more points, like I think you you would have changed your 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 vibe on that. So you know, I think you were being realistic. Uh, you know, but I'm glad you were wrong. Yeah. I mean, I'm look at y'all being co host. Don't stick up for him, DT. <laughs> Rob, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm not going to be a Texas fan. I'm not going to go into purgatory for the next four weeks. This is my show. I am going to stand hey. on my own yeah. two feet, 10 toes so down. Crazy, and, hey, and, crazy and, story. And I, yesterday. I mean, I made a mistake, man. I thought I gave way more respect. See, one of the things that they talk about when you win a Super Bowl, we haven't, we hadn't. We've never experienced it. They say you get a little fat. Everybody in your town, everybody in your hometown, all your homeboys, everybody is telling you for an entire offseason how great you are. It has to get you to a little bit. And maybe they were a little bit flat. I don't know. And I don't know if Stafford's crazy, was okay. Crazy but story. It is what it of is. Yesterday, I'm at the Vikings-Packers game. I'm in line to the bathroom, and I turn behind me. Wade Phillips is standing behind me in line to the bathroom. His son's the OC no for the Vikings. No way. And – so I, yeah, heck yeah, shook his hand, you know, get talking to him and tell him I'm from Buffalo, big Bills fan, just in town, you know, for the weekend. And first thing he says is that defensive line's damn good. That defensive mm-hmm. line's damn good, better than any line I ever had in Buffalo. So that just shows that, you know, that people wanted high hopes, you know, for for a transition there. And now it's it's come to fruition on top of everything else. So that just shows, you know, uh, an NFL uh, legend in my eyes was was saying that, you know, yeah. quick. That was his first thing he said about the game. Yeah, man. The, the defensive line really showed out. It was really fun to watch. And again, I'll I'll stick on that. Uh, that'll be my my taking uh, my my number one takeaway from the game was that the defensive line rushed four, did not blitz, and that speaks more again to the future for me because if you're rushing four and dropping seven, it does allow you to, again, cover up some of the corners, let them grow uh, and kind of come along as they they progress through the season. As we begin to wrap up, I wanted to make sure that we took a little trip around the league. I know that everything has kind of been said already in respect to the Bills, so I, I really appreciate the fact that you guys took the time out of your night because it was so much fun. That game was so much fun, and, and we acknowledge again, Bills didn't play perfect on offense. We'll have to clean up the turnovers, but I'm after watching the games yesterday, man, uh, we'll, we'll go through. Let's go through the league first, and then we'll update who are the threats as we get ready for this Denver Broncos uh, Russell Wilson debut tonight. We'll quickly go through the league, and I would just want your thoughts if you guys are are watching or listening again. Um, if you bring up the schedule from yesterday, it was I mean, week one was was wild. Like it was a wild week, wild games, wild finishes. 
Um, I love the fact that Brian Dable, again, I'm a, I'm a supporter of him. I'm a supporter. I want all the smoke. I know that him and Sean McDermott didn't get along. I know it's because McDermott wants to run the ball all the damn time, and I'm sticking to it. So I'm so happy to see him have some success. He goes for two. I mean, Big Mike, that was that was gutsy. But in, in at the same way, after seeing how it turned out, it didn't matter. Like he told them at the podium, had it not gone that way, DT, had he not gone that way, Big Mike, he said he could he could have lived with that. And I just love how he imparted from day one, from the first real game he imparted on this team that he believed in this team. And that's got – you want to talk about culture, since everybody wants to talk about culture, what kind of culture did he lay down uh, for the Giants yesterday, Big Mike? Because I, I like that a lot, man. I really did. They're the Giants. <laughs> I mean – I mean, you know, he's trying to bring something different over there. Mm-hmm. Going, you know. I mean, of course, because he, he kind of commands it anywhere he goes. I mean – of course, I have my disagreements with the man. Right for empty plays, we know as an OC, yeah. I know, but we're not taking steps back. So he's he's the head coach now. He's running. He's running his own ship now. His own team, so he'll notice those things and those hiccups as he's a head coach and you know going with the play caller that's not him. So we'll see. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know Dallas still sucks, so I'm cool with that. <laughs> DT, what, you got a chance to watch football yesterday. What what were some of your takeaways from some of the games? We had Saints over yeah. Falcons by a point. Now that was a really close game. Mariota looked kind of good in that game. We had Falcons uh, they, are, are they're haunted after that Super Bowl. Like they have been haunted. Like God bless them. Been, <laughs> been, DT, what what did you think yeah. of some of the games yesterday, man? There was it was some well, wild action, man. Yeah. And I'll take some, you know, a takeaway that we're not the only dogs in the league. You know, there's oh. some quarter, especially in quarterback mm-hmm. play. You know, there's there's some Preach. good QBs out there that Keep you know real. can you know, a lot of a lot of guys over 300 yards, a lot of guys with multiple touchdowns. You know, so there's 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 some good good teams, some good quarterbacks that you know can make you pay out there. I like some closeness to a lot of games for in the Bills side of things. I mean. You know, with Cincinnati going down, Titans going down, Colts with the tie. Really, you know, the Chiefs and Chargers are the only two, you know, that you you think you're going to be in playoff contention at the end of the year that got wins along with the Bills this week. So I like seeing that, you know, as part of the Bills. Um, I had a nice little special weekend out seeing, you know, a couple of NFC teams play that right, uh, right. I don't usually get. And um, one Got a chance thing to see Rodgers, Rodgers, Big Mike, yeah, Big Rogers, Mike. I mean, some, I mean, DT was in the some, building and that was, that no, was, wah, wah, no wah, help. Wah, 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 was, was literally that? no help. Uh, but man, it, when it comes to state, I hope the Bills Stadium is half as the new one is half as nice as something like Minnesota's got out there. That is awesome out there, awesome vibe, awesome stadium all the way around. But but yeah, I mean, there's some, there's some dogs in the sleeves, some QBs that um, in some real talented rosters all the way around. But we already knew that, um, and it's not going to be easy, you know, by any means. But um, definitely uh, excited to see some teams that you know, like the with the Bengals losing, the Titans kind of looking bad, um, and those regards to hopefully get them off the radar uh, sooner than later uh, when it comes to playoff time later in the year. Yeah. Uh, as we go around the league, I, I really agree. You know, there's, there was some cool games to watch uh, yesterday, Big Mike, and and we'll just quickly go around. We don't have to um, give comments on everything, but, you know, the Saints again, uh, Big Mike talked about how the Falcons are cursed because they have to be anytime you give up that kind of lead in the Super Bowl. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's literally coming back they, they to haunt them every every season it seems like they just can't, they can't get right since they can't they are drowning like drowning. <laughs> the negative energy from that Super Bowl uh, literally is just lingering <laughs> in the building and i know that arthur blank owns home depot maybe he needs to get some reconstruction going on and like i don't know man get some i don't know get some uh, some herbs or some spices or, or whatever i don't know figure something out to change the energy in that room because um they can't seem to get out of their own way the bears and the mm-hmm. niners uh, fellas, they went into a, a monsoon before the game, and then it wasn't really much cleaner. Um, right. So that was a sloppy game. Uh, hopefully, you stayed away that on uh, stayed away from that game. Excuse me on your guillotine legs if you had to, because that game had every markings of being horrible. Trey Lance, I'm not sure, fellas. Like I, I keep, you know, I always want to support uh, black quarterbacks. I always want them to to do well, but that doesn't mean that they all have it. So I don't well, know. It's very very it early, was, and it was straight straight monsoon. Yeah, I mean it I wasn't know. just raining. There was standing water, you know, on yeah. that field. So can't you can't that. take too much. You can't take too much from that game. You got yeah. you got to see him, you know, in a better in a better spot for sure. One yeah. of the most yeah. Go ahead, Big Mike. 
he needs dry land. <laughs> yes, he does. He played in, in, North, in North Dakota State. Like he, need, you know, he, he does. does. He needs it. Yeah, he we'll, see. we'll see. I mean, I mean, they've committed to him, and they they told Jimmy. Obviously, they restructured his contract, so they're 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 ready to go uh, with Trey. Um, the Steelers Bengals game was one of the wildest games I've ever seen. Um, literally, just the back and forth right. nature, how both coaches were playing for a tie. Um, it was wild. Uh, down the stretch and like the kick and then the 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 doink like it was it, and then the sound that it made the thud that it made and then I thought that you know, <laughs> I thought Cincinnati was gonna win and I was like they are gonna play that shit on Pittsburgh radio all week long just the Nightmare. thud sound and Nightmare. um <laughs> Pittsburgh luck, lucked out man Pittsburgh lucked out DT they they got a chance to come away with that they did not deserve it necessarily even with the five turnovers they still should have lost it but it was a that was a real fun game to watch no, nonetheless i mean i couldn't even believe yeah. it was on my screen <laughs> yeah and it but it came with a cost man uh you know it, it looks like tj watt out for the year and yeah. Najee oh harrison God. went out and you know a few yeah. others so you hate to see that obviously we won for anybody but you know came came with a cost came with a cost but yeah, yeah it's it crazy too. crazy every i didn't realize you know till you know i was back watching all the highlights last night how many games came down to a oh man goal. the eagles you know were it was huge it was nuts. the lions yeah. and, and the lions came back they, the uh, eagles, yeah it eagles ended up uh holding out and pulling out a three a three point uh win with 38 35 but like the lions made it interesting we saw the tua line. We finally got a chance to see our Tua hype. This yeah. the the dude looks the exact like the exact same motherfucker that I've always known. Like he doesn't look anything more special yesterday yeah. than he's ever looked. Like not, like the stats look cool. It was a quick pass to Waddle, one touchdown in the entire game between both. Te- uh, excuse me, uh, for I think it was one touchdown or maybe might have been two touchdowns because um, the Patriots obviously scored seven, but it was not pretty. It was not a pretty game. It was not well played, no. and is, um, I don't the, feel any different about him. He is oh, the. Yeah. Taylor. <laughs> that and that that game also showed that Mac Jones probably the worst quarterback in the AFC East. Hey. Even Joe Flacco over Mac Jones. Right. I mean, Joe I'm Flacco not. over Mac Jones. Oh, I mean, Flacco. He, that pick he threw was. Oh, that's not that's not what you. Late in DT, it was like he handed it right to the man. I was like, oh, okay, that's how we playing. Cool. Go back. <laughs> What are we doing, bro? That was yeah, crazy. man, that's crazy. They had Flacco drop back 59 times uh, in the Jets' yeah. loss to the Ravens. Again, oh, yeah. Lamar Jackson yeah. did, did you see? Did you see yeah. uh, somebody, though, left a grill on in the Dolphins' uh, parking lot? No. And, what happened? Uh, yeah, 12, 12 cars blew up. No. Yeah, uh, are you serious? On, melted, <laughs> melted 12 cars in the parking lot. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, damn, how doesn't this happen literally every Like building? every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. every we week are way, the, we are way more park, I feel like but this they, would happen. But, but, <laughs> but, but, wow. Able, but we put that fire out. I did not hear that. No, that is a crazy story. We, <laughs> no way. Uh, we saw the Washington Commanders. They got their first win under the – uh, Wentzless uh, uh, direction of their offense. I mean, Wentz throws four touchdowns. He really wasn't that good. Uh, he was playing the Jaguars, so we'll see. I mean, I, I do not think that that's going to be I sustained. Mean, yeah, we'll see. Everybody caught a tutty there. You know, the rookie Dotson. Yeah, Jahan Dotson had a couple. Samuel, yeah. Antonio Gibson played well. So even if we'll they're, see. you know, if Wentz can't will you to I win, like make- if they got a bunch of people that, that can help out, you know, that's that's what you need. I like making fun of Wentz just because of the fact that he's so cocky, but he didn't actually do anything. You know what I mean? He got them in a position where they were close to the Super Bowl, but everybody says he was on an MVP uh, trajectory, but he did not finish the job. And Nick Foles finished the job, and he had the swag of a person that it was a general that had just gone out there and and been – you know what I mean? The leader, like Tom Brady, and it was just, I don't know. I just don't like his his energy. That's all. I guess that's that's a personal thing for me. The Browns steal a game down here in Charlotte where – uh, Big Mike and I are at uh, living. They we, we call Charlotte home, and I mean the Browns. They didn't deserve that game, but they came away with it. It ruined Baker Mayfield's um, revenge tour. I heard Jim Brown playing the entire time after after they got the lead, and I was like payback. And then I mean, it's just uh, such a such yeah. a shitty way. And like and Rob, and Rob, like you said about like you said about Tua being the same guy he's always been that's baker mayfield yeah, yesterday baker mayfield saying just uh, oh, uh some spurts of okay but overall mediocrity he's top always top, you know? right just <laughs> a smidge just ah. oh my god can't get right yeah it's curl don't curl yeah, all man. the way <laughs> and what a way to set like the mood for the panthers by mm-hmm. losing his old team right out <laughs> 
it was I, I swear, man, week one was wild. We talked about uh, the oh. Giants and Titans game already. The Colts, Texans, Lovey Smith punts on like the 50 yard line, like literally signaling to everyone that paid a ticket <laughs> for that game that he's playing for a tie. Like I would be yeah, so he said it in his post game. I would be so he said did it in he his really? post game. He admitted it. He said it. He said a tie. He said a tie is better. Yeah, he said a tie is better than a loss. Which he's technically he, right. I thought we had a better chance to tie than win. If if I'm a season he said, ticket I thought holder, we had a better chance really to tie crappy. than win at that moment. <laughs> I, I, yeah. If I'm a season ticket holder, I would feel really crappy. Like I really would, because I'd rather us go to zero and one than to be one and one. Like you really didn't even try to go get it. So that is a very interesting call. But again, I guess the math says that he is correct. Um, so shout out to all the Houston. Texans season ticket holders. So, I mean, that's for y'all to deal with. Packers, again, Vikings, again, DT was there in the building, 23-7 for the Vikings over the, the, I mean, the offense just doesn't look good for the Packers. And we all kind of alluded to the fact that we we wondered two things in the offseason. How bad would we be, would Patrick Mahomes and Rodgers be affected by their number one wide receivers leaving? We all kind of, there was a consensus that that Mahomes would find find a way to make do because he, he likes to get the ball and spread it around, and he has no problem doing that with his unorthodox throwing angles and different things like that. We know Andy Reid is a genius. The one main question, though, was Rodgers, who is self-centered, who kind of runs his own show, who doesn't talk to his parents or his brother or his grandparents. He's kind of in his own world. Now he's talking about the little psychedelics. I'm not hating on him or anything like that. That's not the point. The point is that he kind of just floats in his own space, and he does his own thing. Where are you going? Devontae Adams did not want to come back because of the fact that he he was so in flux. Like, I don't know when this dude is going to keep throwing the ball to me. Like, he could be next year. It could be gone in 2023. I don't know. Let me go back and hook up with my with my old college buddy because I don't know about this dude. DT, you were there. Yeah. Give us give us the lowdown as we wrap up. Like, that didn't well, look that it, good. I don't well, give, one, a, I don't yeah, give yeah, a damn if Rodgers is coming to Orchard Park. I don't care. I saw, yeah, I saw the Bills a eight years and, ago. And – it, it couldn't have set up any more perfect to, you know, answer those questions of how is he going to do with these new receivers? Literally their first play on offense, they, they threw a 60 yard bomb down the field to wide. I think Watson, the rookie Watson wide open beat Patrick Peterson up the side was wide open, had him by easily 10 yards and Rogers put it in this guy's hands right in the basket. Couldn't have been any of cleaner of a deep ball. And the guy drops it first, first and 10 first, offensive play for the Packers and that kind of after that game was over man the game was over after that and that kind of put into perspective how's he going to do with these new receivers obviously that drop was kind of ironic to it's going to be a long year for the Packers I think but on the other side of the ball 18 there just Justin Jefferson is going to be a problem that dude's yeah, nasty man, he already is yeah. that dude's Mike, nasty. big Mike he already is one isn't he, he I mean he is he is one and that and I don't he dominated that game I, mm-hmm. I haven't seen you know, uh, you know, obviously we have digs and you know receivers that play really well for, but it's Josh Allen dominating the game. That game, Justin Jefferson dominated the game. Mm-hmm. Big Mike, man, he's a problem. I mean, DT's hitting on the head like he is one, and and that has no buyer's remorse. Stephon Diggs, the captain, salute again. Elevated Josh Allen's play. He, need, he did not need a rookie. He needed somebody that was established, ready to go. So I understand when people want to say, well, we could have just drafted Justin Jefferson. Listen. No, Josh got exactly what he needed. He needed another dog, somebody that was going to instill confidence into him and help raise his game to another level. Stefan Diggs has done has exponentially made our quarterback better. But but DT's right, big bike. Like <laughs> Justin Jefferson is a he's, he's a Madden character. He's a problem. He ain't gonna yeah. be short stats this year, I'll tell you that. What's that? I say he's not gonna be short of stats this year. <laughs> no, he's not going to be short of no. stats, man. One eighty four, yeah. I think it was. A lot of, a lot of love for touchdowns. Diggs though out there still in Minneapolis. A lot of love for Diggs. Obviously, I was, you know, I was still Buffalo proud, and you know, not letting anybody uh, forget that, you know, how how good the the Bills and seventeen looked Thursday, and a lot of love for Diggs, and a uh, lot of a lot of people I talked to coming in for November thirteenth, uh, Bills Vikings. What I said, you know, hope you have a good time, but we can bust your ass. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, it, it was so much fun. It was so much fun watching this the weeks, uh, excuse me, the weeks games go by and and kind of see what was going on. Um, listen, Big Mike, as we wrap up, we've only got a couple games left. Uh, we'll 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 skip over uh, the final game because it was so boring. I mean, the Brady and 
and and the you know the Cowboys and it looks like you know Dak Prescott got hurt and obviously the Cowboys season is shattered and what quarterback are they going to go get? I'm so sick of the Cowboys, obviously. So I don't even want to really talk about them. Brady looks like he's halfway checked out. Like he you know he literally didn't come work for 11 days to to, to acquiesce to his wife. So you know he's got one foot out the door. This will be his last season. Reports came out before the game that this will probably be it for uh, for the goat. Uh, that we we hate so much the goat that we we don't like so much so listen that's fine they handled their business 19 to 3 in a boring game sunday night chargers um are the last two teams i wanted to talk about because we'll end the episode on this who are the threats as we are um reassessing after week one chiefs look like the chiefs they methodically moved the ball down the field when they needed to i heard guys that had caught passes that i had never heard of including jody fortson who was from south park didn't know that so shout out to jody fortson got his first touchdown shout out to the 716 uh for the chiefs uh tight end i think he is and he he caught a touchdown pass yesterday so chiefs look like the chiefs big mike i mean what what you want me to say i call him the boogeyman here at nickel city crew dt knows how we, i refer to him that's that's my choice you can rub your hands together you can make faces if you want to until i see the bills beat him when it counts i'm they, going to they, i'm going to be scared i'm going to be scared and you can't tell me you can't tell they, me not to be scared because we never beat him when it matters they, just saying they, they just saying or no just saying they, we never beat him when they, it matters the Cardinals. Okay. Yeah, we, and no then problem. they beat us the last two years okay. in the playoffs. No problem. You know? okay. I mean, no it's, problem. So, so it's the they, Cardinals. They so you're saying the Cardinals are that us. much worse are that much worse than the Rams, and that's why they look like that. I mean, they beat them by you know just as much as we did down there. Are they and not? With, and with I don't know. Patrick I don't know anything. Holmes, it was week one. I mean, I just I, with I don't Patrick know. It's week one. Plus three hundred and five tutties. I mean, I mean they're <laughs> they they're definitely right back in in form. They're going to be a force to reckon with. They're going to be there at the end of the year. You you got to beat them, and you know, and that's what it's going to come down to. And the same with the Chargers. The Chargers are right Chargers. there. What kind of people expected? A strong offense, a better you know defense through the off season, but. Keenan Allen with an injury, Eckler's getting a little older. They're, some of their skill guys might not be there all year, but uh, you know, they're they're all the expectations are kind of factoring into these teams that we thought are going to be good are probably going to be good. Big Mike, what do you think of Herbert? I, they, 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 they. Sometimes I feel like they're disrespecting my quarterback's name because they always want to keep him in the same conversation. He definitely, definitely is talented. You can see it. Yeah. He has the arm strength to make yeah. literally quote unquote every throw and things like yeah. that. Obviously, he's not a scrambler. What do you? What, what's up with Herbert? Is he? Is he like? Is he Josh two point Is he on his way? Not, not the scrambling ability, but like, is it like he? Is he getting ready to arrive? Is he getting ready no. to get a seat at the table? No, no, he's a slinger. <laughs> A gunslinger, like he's just okay. a gun. He Marino Elway. Yeah, he Far. wanted, you know, what I'm saying he's he's a stand in the pocket guy, and you know, ain't nothing wrong with that. We all need different kind of quarterbacks. He's that guy. Yeah. He's a slinger. So you know, you gotta give respect, respect, dude. He got, he's accurate. He's got a hell of an arm, and shit, he's a smart ball player. So right. you know, it works for he's them. A, he's the prep school Josh Allen. I think yeah, right. he has the yeah he's Josh he Allen the, without the dog. Okay, okay, he has the exactly exactly. Now he, I got it. He's, he's buttoned Josh up. Allen he looks without good the on the field, but he don't got mm. the swag. No, he doesn't have that dog in him. Because our quarterback definitely has it. He showed it once again. Um, I would like to as we as we wrap up tonight and we finish up. I think we can all collectively say that Josh Allen, please stop running the ball when you're up 21 points and trying to run over linebackers because oh. you um, are trying to make a statement. I think that it is not wise, and I'm going to humbly ask you. I know you don't know me. My name is Rob Crippen. I run the small podcast. I'm, few, I'm 37 years old. I live here in Charlotte. I'm Buffalo born and raised. Josh, if you don't mind, for the sanity of myself and those in my family that love me, please stop running the damn ball. Um, I mean, like, come on, man. Like, I just need him to understand situation. And he does. That's the whole point, DT, is that he does. He just doesn't give a shit. And, like, that's the whole point. Where, like, but but we, talk, to... we talked back, you know, when he said the welcome to the NFL moment, that Patriots game a few years ago, he took those hits, he threw those picks, and instantly was coached out of it. You didn't see that for a while. And so but I nobody think, can yeah, coach him out of getting he, out of running over linebackers because he throws he got a little hype. He got a little hype Thursday. He got a little he got a little feeling himself and, and maybe did some unnecessary stuff. But you know that's that's what you got to take for you know with the talents like that. And so I think he knows and I think he'll 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 bring it back a little when it comes to that type of stuff. But um but yeah I mean I don't think Big anybody Mike, can you add so him on if, Twitter if can us as a us as a crowd are saying yo 
chill out like that, I'm sure the coaching staff is doing the same thing, and and you know, and he, he should be settling down. Mike, let you the, know somebody at the Bills, man. Somebody holler at him on our behalf, let, on behalf of Nickel City Crew, please, for me and DT, please. Stop it. Let this man be. <laughs> you can't stop him from being him. Yeah. Stop no, him. I'm not saying not be him and run somebody over when he needs to. I'm talking to about time and situation. Quarter, I'm talking about when awareness. When we're up 21 in the fourth quarter and he's running a QB draw awareness. with, with yeah. a smirk on his face trying to run somebody over <laughs> Yo, we don't need to, he's a psychopath. He, he, he acts like yeah. a psychopath out there. He acts first, like a psychopath, big Mike. First game out the league, 13 seconds is all they was talking about. What did right. you think it was gonna do? Yeah, I know thought he was gonna they be okay. So they won 10. Yeah. Get out of yeah, here. Yeah, because he's the man, and you cannot stop a phenom from being a phenom. He's gonna do what he do. That's perfect, and that's the perfect ending to the show. And we will we will end on this note. Big Mike, you go first. Uh, DT, you go, and then I'll go because you already know how I feel about it. Where I don't even want to really talk about it. Did yes or no, and just a quick explanation as we close up shop tonight. Big Mike, did 13 seconds play a factor in how they whoop the Rams' ass? Can we think that that's going to continue throughout the years? Are are they actively using this as gasoline? Yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. And no you doubt about to, it. You have no doubt about it. it. Got to use it as fuel. That's how game. That's how the game goes. No, no, no. I know you have to. You you might want to, or or some teams might choose to, or some teams might choose to ignore it. I don't know how how the Bills operate. I'm asking you. Do you think that they are? Absolutely. You got to okay. put it. Hell yeah, because that's all you hear around the league. All you hear is that 13 seconds, and it's really it's, it's starting to be you know something that the Bills are getting on really their damn nerves. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? So now it's game one. What's up? Say it again. 13. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll contradict. I'll contradict you, Mike. I don't think so. I think okay. the 13 seconds signifies we're good, but we can't get it done. Okay. So we don't want so to. No, no. I'm asking you: Are they using it as motivation to 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 get it done this year? Because I I don't think that's the motivation to get done. I said that okay. they they put it they set they put it in a bottle, set it at sale, and see. This is not us. 13 seconds was uh you know corresponded to who we weren't. Let's mm -hmm. make our own. This year Identity. to who we are. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I can go with both theories. Um, that that's a good point. I never really thought of it that way, DT. I would think um just from a competitive standpoint that um that it might piss those guys off that that, that it happened and that it's on their watch, so to speak, you know, from from the players perspective, that you know, that, that 13 seconds happened and we can't ignore that it happened, and who knows that better than the players. So um I would think that it would be a little bit naive to think that they're not thinking about it. Um, but it was really um, it was just an interesting thought that I had. And I, and listen, I don't care what their motivation is if they can continue to play that way. I know that the offense, like we said, hopes uh, that they clear up uh, the turnover issue. But other than that, I was really impressed with the defensive line. I know we all were. Cannot wait. Buffalo Bills in action. Monday night football next week. We'll get another Sunday of just football. Get a chance to watch our team play. Again, my sad story is that I will not be able to be in attendance. So I won't be able to see DT up there um, like our normal routine. But um, I'll be there in spirit. Can't wait to watch the game. Um, uh, and and listen, the Bills are on the cusp of something crazy. Maybe. We don't know. We can't predict the future. But boy, after Thursday, I feel great about it. If you thought the Bills were getting ready to win the Super Bowl or at least represent the AFC in the Super Bowl, nothing from, from Thursday night is going to deter you from feeling that way or even more confident. So I'm really excited. I can't wait. These are the type of shows I can't wait to do and, and that I'm excited about. I, the offseason dragged on for me. So this has been so fun. Thank you again to our, our, our friend. You had to come and roast me like uh, Jalen Ramsey, barbecue chicken, my man, Big Mike. Check him out. New, uh, not your average podcast in the 716 over at Built in Buffalo. Shop 143. You heard the name. Uh, appreciate you, man. Spending the time out of your schedule, man. Taking the time to come on again, man, and, and roast me, man, and put me in my place. Man, don't I, do I thought it again. they would lose. Don't do it again. I'll I'm be sorry. back. Do it again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. DT. As always, my co-host, uh, Adam Dump Truck Repsick. Appreciate you, man. Always, man. Holler at the crew, man. Close us out. Hey, we back. Love it. Another week. Uh, nice little mini buy for the Bills and a mini buy for us. Rest up. Get ready to go for Monday night. All right, man. Well, let's hit them with the Go Bills. Let's get out of here, man. As always, spread love, not hate. Go Bills. Go Bills. Cool.